Hey there, Adrienne Elise here. Welcome to Gaia Daily for March 31st through April 1st, 2020. So today the moon uh, moved into, this morning, the moon moved into the sign of Cancer. So the moon in Cancer is going to bring forward probably um, some sh energies of um, some emotional energies with Mercury now out of its retrograde shadow and the moon in Cancer, we've got some water, some currents moving. And this is also a, a, on currents on another level is Mars together with Saturn for the next couple for these couple of days in Aquarius at zero degrees. So Aquarius represents is speaking of higher vibrational frequency. It's also the water bearer. And so these new currents of energy that we've been asked to put our attention on and know in our heart, in our soul, that we're going through spiritual ascension, that this is a spiritual process that's happening right now in our world. And to be present with these energies is, again, the message. But with the water activation of the moon in Cancer and Mercury out of shadow in Pisces is going to bring up emotions. And this is about the shifting currents because this new vibration coming in represented by Mars and Saturn conjunct at zero degrees Aquarius, it's speaking to time to move forward in this evolution, time for these new vibrations, for this higher vibration, the lower grid is being dismantled. You know, what happens is we move into a higher vibrational frequency and this works to you know, the effect of that is this dismantling. And we kind of are get focused because we've been taught and programmed through our lifetimes and our earth evolution that we are the physical, right? So what we can see is what exists. That's what's, that's what's real. But there's so much more to this story, right? And if you've been on the journey of spiritual awakening, you know this, you know this in your heart from all your experiences that you went through before you came to earth evolution, and so when the destruction of our world, like we've been talking about, this destruction, this breaking apart, this um, dismantling of the physical matrix, you know, uh, as we move into higher frequency vibrations, that's just it. That's what's happening. It's not just a breakdown, right? And yet, because we've been so programmed to cling to what we know in our physical reality as true, it feels like we're losing everything right now. And like, people and humanity in general, it's kind of like clinging to the sinking ship. And it's like, well, this is what I know. And so I'm going to cling to it, which this is this old blooming of trauma stories that have happened over our earth evolution. And uh, this so much pr programming has gone into uh, keeping us attached to the earth and thinking and attached to our physical body and materialism. That's like the mode that the control energies work through to keep us from our spiritual truth, to keep us from going back to source fully and completely in between lifetimes. And so this is all dismantling, right? It's like a, a grand ego death for the whole collective consciousness. And that ego death is also like this materialistic monster, the narcissism that has taken over our cultures. And um, it's like this creature is losing its life force it's just separating off it can't it can't exist so this is kind of the bigger picture of spiritual evolution and what we've been waiting and waiting for and uh kind of been held back from since way back in atlantean time but when we move to higher frequency vibrations which we're fully equipped to do that we're designed to do that the earth is actually that's her deal this time right? Like she's ready to roll. She wants to go to 5D. She's ready to uh, come into the Eden star that she is. And we're traveling with her, our spaceship. And, uh, you know, that's where connecting to the earth is so important right now. And when you stop and you listen to nature, if you can right now, if you're in a position, even the smallest amount of nature and be present with the animals, you can feel this incredible peace that's happening. And this expansive energy just kind of evidence that what we're going through is a beautiful thing that's all okay.
um, on this other level, right? <laughs> Spiritual level. So, um, but what's happening and why these lower energies have held back earth evolution for so long is that when we do move to these higher frequency vibrations, they can't stay here. They kind of get burned up. We can adapt and shift and change, but that does require an ego death. You know, it does require on a psychological level, oh, I think I might have, I was wrong, right? Um, I think maybe there's way more to the story than I was told. I think everything I've been taught is a lie, right? You know, so everybody individually is going through their own process of awakening and where they're at at the spectrum and where they can allow these energies to come in, how much they want to need to cling to the ship of the physical reality in the way that we've known it. Um, but it's, again, the message is going back to this, that this isn't just a dismantling and a breakdown. You know, it isn't the end, it's a beginning. And we've been waiting and waiting for this. And it's a beautiful thing if you see it from a spiritual perspective, which is, you know, it's hard, of course, like we talked about, because we all have contractual arrangements, loyalty contracts with humanity itself, with our families, with groups of souls. And so it feels selfish to allow these new energies and higher vibrational frequencies in your life right now, because it's like you're abandoning them. And yet that's exactly what we're being called to do here, to usher this thing forward in the most harmonious way with the least negative creating, with the least uh, upheaval in the systems of our world. That comes down to you souls and why you're here, why you've gone through so much to be here and coming into this inner power, this inner knowing within and allowing yourself this joyful peace as as your spiritual practice right now as much as you can. Now, but since we have so much going on with this, because when the light comes in, right? So these new currents of energy, this Aquarian energy, it it, it disrupts. You know, uh, Uranus, the ruler of Aquarius, is the awakener. It's in Taurus, an earth sign. You know, so it's, it's about, oh, Taurus is about our physical reality, what we need to uh, survive, and also our gifts. Um, so it's awakening our gifts, and we've been talking about that, but it's also dismantling, shaking up the old way of doing things and our old belief systems and the structures of our world. And so when the new energies come in, these higher vibrational frequencies, these new currents of energy um, that seem to have happened a while ago, our sun making a transition, our whole solar system moving to a new part of the galaxy. And yet there's been all this mechanism to keep these new vibrations from us. Maybe that's part of the chemtrails. We don't know. But um, now they're like, it's coming in. It's coming in hard and fast, you know. And yet it's like, can you allow that for yourself? You know, can you allow yourself that freedom? Can you step out of the cage and come into your uh, spiritual awakening, which is you've been told was scary, destructive, uh, you can't handle it, uh, you'll die, um, you know, you'll be completely alone. That's a big part of the programming. And those are all lies. It's a beautiful energy that actually brings us closer together in our consciousness and creates a better world just by allowing these energies into our life. But so when these new energies, these currents, the this Mars activating Saturn at zero degrees Aquarius and these new vibrational frequencies, it's good because we're like, oh, that's what this is about. This isn't about just losing everything, breaking down, uh, you know, ongoing <laughs> Um, dismantling an ego death, right? It's like, oh, 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 because that's like this, there's a new, you know, it's about something new. It's about this beginning. It's about these new vibrations. So these currents are coming in and that's even furthering, ca causing this dismantling to occur. And with this water energy right now, the moon in Cancer, what the moon in Cancer has already passed over the North Node, but then today, it, um, I mean, yeah, cross over the North Node, and then it squares up with Chiron, Black Moon, Lilith. And then it's going to trine Mercury in Pisces, and then square Jupiter and um, Pluto in their conjunction. So the moon is very busy, and it's kind of like currents going all different which way, 
you know, and this has to do with emotional energy that needs to move like grief energy. Now that Mercury's out of shadow, that started happening yesterday. It was kind of like, oh, we're, you know, kind of face the music of some old stuck emotional energies that are coming to the surface. And so these are the changing currents for us right now have to do with this, like, it's kind of like the moon and cancer is having this every which way kind of energy for these next couple of days. And then with Mars <laughs> conjunct Saturn, it's like we're being beamed with these high frequency vibrations. And it's kind of like being um, cooked a little bit, <laughs> you know, with these, these other energies. And so that's bringing up griefs, you know, because when the new energies come in, they'll bring to the surface stuck, unresolved stuff. And in this case, it has to do with water and emotions and grief and all these stories that we've gone through. For these souls, it's like lifetime after lifetime of what you've experienced just kind of coming up. And there's a thread that goes through those experiences. This has to do with Chiron and Chiron in Aries is exact semi-sextile one degree or one sign apart from Uranus. So they're both at five degrees, five degrees Aries for Chiron, five degrees Taurus. So they're making, this is, they're kind of frame, giving us the framework of what's happening here. And Chiron has to do with wounds that it's like a, a, a theme of especially for these souls chiron is about you guys because it's about our deepest wounds you can't get that in one lifetime it has to do with the stories that have happened kind of repeated over this earth evolution and part of the reason why your life's been so hard this time is that you couldn't quite complete your karma and you have a kind of pile up of karma that the energies weren't able to support you in releasing until this lifetime. So you've had to spend a good part of your life in this lifetime on doing all of this karma from all these other lifetimes to start living in order to start living, right? And that's exactly where we're at right now. So are you ready? It feels like this blooming of this deep, dark isolation that you as a soul has had to go through. Spiritual isolation is just a part of your story because of the type of soul that you are. And that's blooming. You know, the social distance, this feeling of lack of connection on a spiritual level, like it's not even possible, you know. And so this current situation in the world is bringing up these things and expect, I would expect in this next couple of days with Mercury finally moving into new territory and Venus in, I mean, the moon in Cancer, it's about cleansing out stuck emotions and allowing those emotions to come to the surface. Now, things are very much moving though, right? Because Mercury's on its path and, you know, now out of shadow, just cruising through Pisces and um, the moon moves very fast. And so it's like understanding that it's very dynamic time. So it doesn't mean you need to get stuck in that muck. This is about allowing the tears to come, allowing the energy to move. And then you'll be like, oh, Oh, okay. I feel better. Oh, it's clearly the stuff stuck in my cells, this trauma programming from the past, and it's just got to move, right? And so allowing the process of emotional release to happen so that you can move back into that more expansive, bigger picture of what's happening here on a spiritual level, the work you're here to do right now, which is to uh, allow the light of joy into your life and hold space for this transition on a spiritual level. And um, so really good work there. And so this weekend, uh, so Black Moon Lilith and Chiron are two degrees apart now. So they've separated out, but they come back to one degree apart this weekend. And then the following weekend, Easter weekend, uh, Mercury moves into Aries. So like Mercury's just cruising along through the rest of Pisces. That transition of Mercury on the 11th, 12th um, Easter weekend is going to be quite an energetic transition after that oh, deep in the soup Pisces, staying in Pisces for so long, three times over that Aquarius Pisces cusp, trying to figure out, because Mercury's our everyday conceptual reality, are the messages, how we make sense of the world in our everyday psychology. And so this it's like a mercury had to go on this big vision quest you know over this into aquarius and back into pisces and um now moving into aries it's like being free from the from the chains of the piscean age and having a new birth 
in our conceptual reality. So it makes sense that we're having to do this whole reset. I think more and more awakening to bigger truths that are going on in the world, like our true history and um, how our science, our science books don't really add up with the actual research and things like that. Um, and so these types of awakenings um, to truths and reconstructing. So that's kind of an energy we talked about yesterday, like how it's time to put our energy on reconstructing our world, not so much on the deconstruction, but now that Saturn and Mars are together in Aquarius, it's like, oh, wait, no, this is about building something new. We're just getting started. And this is an exciting foray. And this is the necessary something is happening right now that's part of this spiritual journey. The spiritual awakening that's been trying to happen has been happening for, you know, like Atlantean, it's like maybe 100,000 years ago, like, you know, thousands of years, thousands of lifetimes we've been working on this. And so this particular situation is going to be very short compared to that. And it's like not as you know, traumatic as things that we've had to go through in the past on the planet. And, um, and so we need to keep our eye on the prize as far as like, oh, this is a part of the spiritual awakening, sending our love and our prayers, but also allowing ourselves to be in that truth of this new currents of energy that are coming in and this reconstruction process. And so Mars and Saturn are like a bridge to the Aquarius energy. And then we've got Jupiter and Pluto at 24 degrees of Capricorn and this beautiful kind of rainbow bridge to a new world, kind of like, yeah. So we got the deconstruction and the reconstruction happening at one time. And you have an ability why you've struggled so much has to do with your intuitive ability to be in multiple dimensional realities and to have one foot in this world, one foot in that world, offer your loving help and support energetically. And at the same time, allowing yourselves to be in the reconstruction team, which is um, this expansive uh, spiritual energy, ecstatic joy. And it's like that even sounds sinful, doesn't it? At this time. And what if that's your spiritual purpose? Maybe it was all along. And then we got caught in all this religious dogma and these stories about that it's not spiritual to experience that kind of energies. It's dangerous. It'll hurt people or something. Um, all these stories about spiritual ascension. And now we have to, that's maybe this rewiring that these souls are going through of that permission and this kind of guilt and the group contracts. And yeah, it's like giving yourself just a little bit of time in those new energies. It's like, oh, I just can't do it anymore. It's harder and harder to go into the lower vibrations. And if you can tell yourself again and again, which is what I'm doing here, <laughs> you know, reminding you, your spiritual purpose is to allow these energies into your life right now. And um, this is an initiation for you back into who you were when you first came to this evolution. <laughs> which you had to cast aside, pretend you weren't. That's that Chiron and Aries, you know? And um, so, of course, Uranus and Taurus in that exact semi-sextile with Chiron and Aries, on, it's like kind of semi-sextiles are let's work together, kind of let's figure this out, let's cross over the lines because each sign, it's like male and female sign. And so Chiron and Aries is like these deep wounds around where you had to completely disconnect from who you are to the point where you might not even recognize most of these souls don't even recognize their power in their consciousness and in their intuitive abilities because you've been so traumatized away from it. You've agreed in contracts, say, oh no, I'll never do that again, right? And then Uranus and Taurus is like rustling the fabric, rustling this, 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 this uh, complacency, this, these patterns and awakening us to our inner treasures, our inner gifts, our spiritual gifts, and our self-worth to receive who we are as a soul. So it's like these are working together, you know, and that's a very important energy as we have this. So that's like a mini bridge 
between um, the masculine energy and the feminine energy. And then there's this bridge between the deconstruction and the construction. So very powerful and potent time to be alive on the planet right now. And I know it feels like, you, you know, when those heavy energies come in and this grief, it's like, get me off. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. You know, like these souls are so sensitive. And as you awaken, you only get more sensitive. And that requires like more levels of self-care beyond what you can imagine with Uranus and Taurus, let's say it, radical self-care. Um, and so knowing that you're getting more and more sensitive as you awaken more and that that requires more tending to your spiritual self. And maybe that's part of this, a gift of this time, being given a little bit more time and space to really tend to yourself. So um, hang in there. And I'm doing this, uh, I'm perfect. Uh, myself and also anybody who wants to follow along, I have in the description, the eight day meditation retreat that I did in January. The first day I went back and listened, there was audio interference. So I did another one. So if you haven't started yet, go ahead. Or if you had the audio interference, it was kind of distracting. So day one, um, and maybe follow along through these time of Jupiter conjunct Pluto, which goes to next weekend, the sixth, um, and so that's a really powerful time because those meditations were created during the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in January before we really saw what this was about. And we talked about how we wouldn't really know what this was all about till Jupiter came into the mix and here we are. Probably not what any of us thought this spiritual awakening would be. Um, and of course, that's part of this complete rearranging of our psychological conceptual reality. So um, maybe check out those that eight-day meditation retreat. We can connect on the astral plane through those meditations. And also this weekend on the 4th, there is that world meditation. Now, this meditation, there's people doing all kinds of meditations at different times, and it's kind of like a wave of energy, you know? And so the time that seemed appropriate energetically for uh, me in this group was is noon mountain time. That's 11 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m., uh, uh, on the East Coast on Saturday the 4th. And so I hope you can join for that. If you can't make it live, you can tap into the replay. And uh, there's no charge for that. You just sign up through Crowdcast. The link to sign up is in the information box below. So that's next Saturday the 4th. And we can be in this energy of the victory of the light of tipping the scales into the new paradigm and um, kind of uh, allowing ourselves to reset into that vibration, use our collective consciousness to hold space for the bigger spiritual picture, send our love and care to all that are suffering and receive any guidance and support, tap into our connection to our guidance, to our support and come together in our consciousness, showing ourselves and each other how powerful we are as creator uh, and in alignment with this. Um, we came, you as a soul had gone through a lot of uh, stuff before you even came to earth and you're already in alignment on some level in your deepest truest self with the ultimate plan of this eden star of this 5d evolution of earth you brought those codes in with you and your dna and they've maybe been covered up and hidden and 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 um contracted and gummed up <laughs> you know but you are in alignment in your truth with what we are creating so you don't have to try to but put yourself in that energy, you just have to allow that energy in your life. And that's going back to everything we talked about today. So um, allow these currents into your life, allow the deeper, heavier energies to move. We can't take that with us into the new age. We got to let this grief go and um, know that this is a beautiful thing that's happening, even though it might not look like it right now. And um, it'll be over sooner than we know. And so uh, I look forward to seeing you soon on the next update or the eight day meditation retreat or the world meditation. Until then, I'm Adrienne Elise. Namaste.